Welcome back, you filthy exiles. So, off the back of the post I put up the other day, I have been working on a second build which I've been funding from the currency I've been generating from my first build. And I probably should do a video on how I'm generating my currency, but it's basically just Delve. Um, and also just endgame mapping and Cyrusing at this point. Um, at this point, I think of it, yeah, full map completion pretty much getting there to full map completion so getting uh getting everything that i need is getting much easier like we're two weeks into the league so yeah all right so what is the build what are we doing all right well this is a juggernaut which surprisingly is now playable again in league i think one percent of overall players are playing jug this league and obviously this is moving towards strength stacking i'm only at level 78 with this it's taken a bit of balancing but you know we're getting there now in particular, the skill that we're using is Bone Shatter. Um, now, uh, void of what popular belief says and what many other forums say and whatever, it's actually quite a good skill and there's nothing wrong with it. There are a few glitchy things with it. Yes, given the weapon range and stun is something that GGG has confirmed they're looking at and that was in the, um, was it the 3.1, 5.1 patch notes or whatever, they are aware that there's a problem with the way that stun currently works. But as an overall, the skill's fucking amazing. Like, at level 79, which I'm predicting with one extra node being this one up here, we're looking at about 1 million DPS straight off the cuff. Now, also bearing in mind, and, and I'll look at, we'll look at configurations soon, and we'll look at that very soon. Bearing in mind, this is using um, Petrified Blood. So we are dealing with damage at a reduced... So the way that Petrified Blood works is basically... Um, it puts you on 50% life and that is deemed as now low life after the patches from last uh, last patch and so basically when you're taking damage from hits 40% of life lost um, below half life is prevented um, and ba basically how this works is as you take damage there's two bars that now operate here and one is the actual your, your life and then one is the life that is sort of like the deferred life that you lose over time and it's, it's at a reduced rate. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means you have to push your life pool up higher to have a lot more life, um, straight up life. At the moment, we're almost at 6K at level 78. And my plan is to get to about 8.5, 9,000 HP and have 4,500 in the pool, which is huge. The other thing that this does is it actually buffs up certain support gems, in particular one that we're using on our setup, a six link setup called Bloodthirst. Um, and basically you get uh, supported attack steal added physical damage with weapons uh, equal to 2% of maximum life while on high uh, while on low life that means that 2% of your maximum life pool in this case the 5842 is going into my direct damage so I'm actually scaling my damage with my life pool as well as in this case strength stacking as well which we'll talk about so this is why this is powerful Pretty much all jugs this league, I think it's like someone in the vicinity of like 70 to 80% of jugs are running uh, Bone Crush, uh, sorry, Bone Shatter. It scales really well with crit, and it, as you would have seen in the B roll, it actually has pretty good clear speed because all you really do is just leap slam around, one hit, whack, done. Now, looking at the overall gem setup, or overall gem setups, and whatever, we'll just talk about the gearing first. So. The first thing to get this working, you're going to need a Pillar of the Cage God. Now, you probably could run this with something else, but this is a strength stacking build. Pillar of the Cage God is really good because you get 16% increased physical weapon damage per 10 strength. And, you know, we're st stacking strength. We've got 1,136 so far, but we're going to take this to a whole new level, and we'll talk about these split personalities soon. So, first thing, you're going to need a Pillar of the Cage God. Second thing... Mega, uh, Meganord's Vise. Now, this usually isn't used in a lot of builds outside of strength stacking, but this is a strength stacking build. So, 100 flat strength, and you also get 2% increased uh, life regeneration with at least 400 strength. So, really good item for this particular build. Now, if you can get this corrupted with vulnerability on hit, that's what you want to do because that's going to make your damage pop, and you'll get that vulnerability stack as well. The other key item you're going to need is an Astramentus. This is going to give you flat, straight up all attributes. So this is going to deal with your intelligence and your dexterity, but it's also going to give you that increase that you need to strength as well. Now, as you can see, mine is not a high roll. I need uh, Divine Orbs to drop, but it's still not too bad. 
Boots, Alberon's Warpath. No replica Alberon's Warpath or anything like that. Just straight up Alberon's Warpath. Eventually, I'm going to corrupt a set of these to have a plus one endurance charge on them because you'll see why very shortly. But stacking endurance charges is what's going to give me a fair crack of damage output as well. Now, rings, just tackling all life strength. Again, as much strength as you can get and resistances. Uh, and also, again, strength, resistances, life. Pretty simple stuff. Getting resistance coverages in this build is a little bit hard right now, at least for me, and I am working on it. Lightning damage still does a fair bit of, is a bit of a problem for me. Once the endurance charges do pop up, that resistance goes to about 65%, but it requires the endurance charges to be up. Um, looking at belt, now this is going to be one of the worst parts of gearing. You do need a synthesized belt with a strength percentage implicit on it. Now, you could do this with a string of servitude, but you're going to lose resistances in life. And life. The, this one in particular was about 60 chaos or 80 chaos, I think. Um, if we just do the quick price check there. Yeah, about 1x. Um, yeah, anywhere up to 1x, depending on the rolls you get. Um, don't stress about this straight away, but this is something when you start to look at getting this up into the higher damage numbers, um, this is where you want to be looking at. Helm, another thing. So there is um, a roll on Helms that you in particular need for this build and it's gain accuracy rating equal to your strength. And this happens on this roll occurs with Warlord uh, influenced Helms. Now you will need this. There's another roll that you'll need also eventually, which I haven't got yet, but <clears throat> um, it'll be you gain a uh, critical chance based on, uh, I think it's 1% of strength or something like that. It's a strength roll as well. Really hard and it needs to be double influence with Hunter and Warlord to be able to get that from my understanding. Probably gonna take a punt at cra crafting that myself, but for now this is doing the job and this will get us well into T16 maps. Right now this is doing like T11, T13 maps pretty easily. Um, it's still got a bit of a ways to go, but it's getting there. Um, the other thing is I lucked out in Uber Lab and got a Bone Shatter um, Trauma and we'll talk about the way that this works probably now actually. So looking at gem setups, uh, void of everything else, you know, in we've just got a basic four link totem setup with our War Chief and our Protector Totems in the, uh, in the um, staff. In the Helm, we're just running Leap Slam. I do have Cruelty, Fortify and Faster Attacks. You don't really need to do that. Faster Attacks and, and Fortify is fine. Um, in the uh, gloves, we're running Dread Banner, uh, Petrified Blood, Pride, and Enduring Cry. We'll talk about how this works very shortly. Now you can also switch Enduring Cry out for Ancestral Cry for the weapon range. I'm not really noticing any issues with this because I'm running a bit of a different setup to what a lot of other benchmark builds are running in their six link, but I'll get into that in a couple seconds. Um, and then just a really basic custom damage taken set up with a mortal call. The reason why we want to use a mortal call and increase duration is because we stack endurance charges. The beauty of that is we basically have almost permanent immortal call. Um, not permanent, not, not always up, but when you're getting hit, you're getting immortal call pretty much stacking and, and, and it's amazing. It's, it's one of the most sort of survivable skills and ways to play jug. Um, void of, you know, all the damage reduction, defense, things like that, that I'm starting to accumulate up here. Now, the six link, this is what's important. So Bone Shatter, Bloodthirst, which is a bit different because not a lot of builds use Bloodthirst. Ruthless, because we still get nearly 3.0 attacks per second. It goes up when we use our, uh, when we use our Ancestral Protector. Um, but, you know, 95%, it did get nerfed this league, but it's still bloody powerful. Um, Awaken Ancestral Call. If you don't have Awaken, these are only like 60 chaos aroundabouts. From memory, no, let's pick up the thing. Um, th this I got for about 60 chaos. It's not really heavily used, but for this build, it's really good. This just means you're going to do a lot more clear speed. It's not too bad for bossing. You could switch this out on bosses and use, you know, brutality or something like that. Um, entirely up to you how you want to play this build. I'm using ancestral call because I like it for the clear speed. Uh, impale. So this is a hundred percent impale build. So we'll just have a look at this uh, offense. Hundred percent impale. So that's a good one to have. And endurance charge on melee stun support. So we always generate, generate endurance charges, but the other advantage of this is you get 4% damage per endurance charge. Multiply that by seven, 
that should da increase damage output. So the more endurance charges you get, the more damage you're going to do, which is incredibly useful for this particular build. That's at 30 to 28 percent. Hopefully, I know my maths. Yeah, it's ah, fuck it. Yeah, it's 28, 38 percent. Yeah, there we go. I think I got there. Yeah, no, 28 percent. 28 percent. There we go. Basic mathematics. I'm fucking. Anyway, um, so as far as the uh, as far as the tree setup. And by the way, I've got nothing special in jewels except for an efficient tra uh, training. That's pretty much it right now. Um, but basically, from a tree setup, you're simply just going to go down, pick up Born to Fight, uh, Warrior's Blood, come down. Now, I have picked up Martial Experience. Eventually, I'll drop this off, but I find the leech helps me big time. Um, and then you want to go up, you want to get Forceful Skewering and Constitution, start getting that health pool up and Impale. Um, and then come across, get Art of the Gladiator, down here to Golem's Blood Vigor, because we need Endurance Charges. And then we'll go down, 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 down. We want to get Call to Arms, Bloodless, Utmost Might, because this is Strength Stacking. Now, this is using Blood Magic, so and Mortal Conviction. And the way that this works is basically we'll reserve our Pride Aura, and then basically we'll do... So you reserve that one first, and then you're going to reserve your Petrified Blood will come off your health pool. And because we're running Petrified Blood, you won't be able to use that first 50% of your health anyway. Um, so that means, so if we turn that off, you'll see what I mean. Um, so as you can see... Oh, yeah. If you run Petrified Blood as a mana um, reservation skill, then you will only have 50% of your health pool that you can use. Um, and that's pretty much how Petrified Blood works. So. The sequence is then uh, run Petri so you run Pride, that'll reserve, that'll be the one aura that you reserve, then you pop on your Petrified Blood, then you pop on your Dread Banner, Bob's your uncle, and that, that'll reserve just, just shy of 50% of your health pool, and you're doing Peachy. Then you'll come up and you'll also pick up Juggernaut, because we want to keep increasing that armor and health pool. Uh, stamina, eventually we'll get the snow down here, but not right now. Uh, you'll get Barbarism, again, health, uh, you want to also get disemboweling because this is going to give you the crit that you need to really give this build a bit of an amp up. Then you'll come up and you're just basically just following the line. You'll pick up devotion, you'll pick up endurance, and you want to pick up all these staff nodes because this is going to increase your block so you can generate power charges and also increase your crit and crit multi. And also melee strike range. Uh, then you'll come up, I've, I've picked this node up here to get my efficient training at my fishing efficient training into the build so I can get more strength and convert this to strength instead of intelligence because we don't need any more intelligence we've got astromentus then we'll come up and we'll pick up purity of flesh again chaos resist and life we'll eventually pick up this whole node but right now just these two are fine then we'll come up and pick blunt trauma again this is increasing crit and crit multi with your with your staves and it also gives you knockback as well which is really cool then you'll come down here, you'll pick up your serp uh, up to Serpent Stance. This is going to increase again your crit and crit multi. Now eventually we're going to pick this up and we're going to put this large cluster and this will happen in the next uh, say 10 levels but to 90. So we're going to craft this large cr cluster into at least a double node cluster. And then we're also going to put in this large cluster two split personalities which means that all of these nodes leading from here through here because it, it picks up direct paths all these nodes up here through to here through to here through to here up to here are going to get a 25 percent increased effect so that means if you've picked up a you know intelligent 10 intelligence or sorry 10 strength you're going to get an extra 2.5 percent strength to every single node there at least so 2.5 to 3 or 2 it'll probably round either way probably round lower knowing poe because it's not a fair game half the time um and that's going to increase your strength stat you know significantly because we're going to roll this not once but twice and these both have strength now these are pretty cheap these were like the really cheap ones there are ones that you can get for, uh, with health rolls i just haven't got them because they are crazy expensive these are about 10 chaos each and that's pretty much it so then you'll have your large cluster, your two split personalities. By that point, we should be about 1.5, 1.6 million DPS, something like that. 
Um, and then it's just the, the essence of just minning and maxing and continuing to drive this build up and dealing with resistances and everything else in between. I cannot do this yet. That's pretty much how this build works. Uh, now, I haven't even set these up. Um, we're probably going to go with Soul of Grathcool and also Soul of Linaris. Uh, we don't really need anything else. No, not really. We could take, take uh, damage over time resistance, but we don't really need that. Uh, actually, there we go. Additional physical damage, and then we'll get that uh, Warmaker as well. And that's gonna give me a lot more damage. Um, damage reduction. So yeah, that's pretty much the build. Um, it's pretty straightforward. This is just a build diary part one. So this will be my second build for the league. This will probably be the only other build I'll play for the league because I, in the past I've done like crazy levels of build I'm gonna focus on currency generation, end game, and things like that after I get this build going, because I'm actually having a lot of fun in this build. Um, but I'll put a POB in the description. Uh, if you've got any questions, feel free to shoot them out or any other comments to make, whether or not I'm on the right track, or if you think that I'm completely crazy, then feel free to put them in the, uh, put a comment in the description uh, or in the comments section. But yeah, anyway, um, yeah, do what you will with this. Um, have some fun. It's actually a really good skill. Um, I don't think it's bad at all. Um, it's not a zoom skill, so pardon me. It's not a zoom skill, so don't expect to be blazing through maps and just one hitting bosses at this stage or whatever with it. But it's quite powerful and it's very tanky. So, and it's a lot of fun. So yeah, and in this league, I'm sort of taking advantage of you know playing the end game with fun builds that are a bit different that not the largest population are playing. So yeah, anyway, here we go. And uh, yeah, anyway, until next time, like and sub, and uh, bye.